So you got to understand as a, as a young a teenager, a teenager getting the opportunity to present music to Mary J. Blige, she's an icon already in my mind. She she did she did her first album, uh, My Life. Um, I mean, um, uh, four one one, and and she did My Life. So she's already triple platinum here and there and all of that. And she is and she is the uh, in our eyes the queen of of soul R and B whatever you want to call it. She is that in our eyes already. I'm just a young teenager kid who's trying to trying to get my my feet wet. And so I'm like, this is a huge opportunity. So I take it serious, right? And and my job always, or, or what I love to do, anytime I get a call specifically about an artist, I love to study. And I love to understand what makes that artist tick and move a certain way. So when I went back and started studying like 411 and and I, I seen that, yo, okay, she loved, she 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 had a bunch of break beats. She was taking a bunch of hip hop beats that rappers was was yep. rapping over already, and then she was singing melody on top. Okay, my life is the is the to me the progression of that more so. Like it's okay, maybe not so much break beats, but still sample driven, right? And then um and but her story is starting to change a little bit. It's st- our story's getting a little bit more deeper on the lyric side. So I take that all in account when I'm when I'm thinking about what I want to create. And then right. and, um and so when I as I'm making all these beats that night, I know the next morning I go to sleep the next morning. And then I wake up somewhere in the afternoon because I got to get on the on the on the, on the New Jersey Transit to do that two and a half hour bus ride to New York. And when I get to New York to Quiet Studios, I know what I got in my back pocket. Like you know, you you so know, you feeling good about it. I feel super super good about it. Like like if you got I can love you beat in your pocket, and you got that share my work share my world progression in your pocket. And you got a dream in your pocket and you got you got those, you kind of have a feeling like, yo, I think she gonna mess with this. I think she gonna mess with this. And as I get into this this environment, there's all these producers sitting on basically sitting in the lounge. Do you remember who was there? I, I want to say I remember seeing like Easy Mo B and Malik Pendleton and, and seeing and seeing producers that I don't even know who they were, but she had them there and they probably was there for a reason they must have been dope right right correct and as i'm sitting down as the young kid mind, mind you i'm everybody's 10 10 years older than me if not more right everybody um they looking at me like who is this young kid coming in the room i'm a teenager and i could hear through the walls what music was was playing i could hear it coming through the walls so when pe- when i heard the music coming through the wall i'm thinking to myself I'm different. And as I said, in part one of this, you got to stand out. You got to be different. So I'm sitting, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely different from that. Hey, stay there for one second. Are you hearing their sound and you're saying I'm different? Meaning they're coming with samples. Yeah, like, 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 and like what I mean was, and what I mean by what I was hearing to in coming through the walls, I was hearing what I heard was, producers playing tracks that sounded like they needed to be on the on on the 411 album or gotcha. producers playing tracks that sounded too spot on of what already had came out whether it's my life or 411 and so in my mind when I'm listening to it I'm like I've always I've always felt this even as a young and I always felt that artists never want to keep going they don't never want to be where they are when you work with an artist they want to keep evolving. They want to go to the next level. So you have to you have to try to take them somewhere else, right? So, um, so as I'm sitting and listening to things playing through the wall, and the producer comes out, and another producer goes in, I'm just like in my mind, I'm like my confidence is growing. I'm like I got this. And it wasn't that the beats that they playing was whack. Nobody's beats was whack. Nobody. These were all great, great dope producers right even that kid i remember that kid the um what's his name was a was a young used to be part of bad boy young blood or something like that um young lord young lord, young lord was there too i remember young lord being in that, in that room because we met that's where we got the, young lord. Lord the first time yeah but i remember like listening to these listening to all these producers and listening to the beats and i was like nah nah i'm different i'm like Get me, I get me in that room. I just wanted to get in that room with Mary. That's all I wanted. I wanted, I wanted to meet Mary, and I wanted to press play. And so, 
it went around and went around. It, it got to me. When it got to me, when I pressed play, I, whoever was outside, I feel bad for whoever was outside because oh, like, 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 like you, you set the tone nicely. But, but I want to paint this picture the right way. In your, I know you can't remember that day specifically, but in your mind, what number were you in terms of being a producer who went near to press play? If there was, if okay, so if there was eight to ten producers there, I probably have been like five or six. Okay, so you knew, you kind of knew five or six with what, what, what they had in their pocket. By yeah, now, yeah. you walking in, you feeling confident. What is the room? What is the feel? Is it dark? Is Mary in there? Like Mary? Like, is Mary? Right is Mary? Is Hank Shockley? And I, I believe Mary's sister was there. I can't, I can't, I believe the time he was there, but I know it was Mary Hank Shockley for sure. Okay. And maybe an engineer, of course. And but I never heard Mary the whole time. I heard the beats playing through the walls. I couldn't <laughs> see it in the room, but I could hear it coming through. But I, but I never heard Mary one time. So when I got in there and, and, and introduced myself and shook her hand or whatever, and I pressed play, out the gate, I Can Love You. That's the first beat I played. Ooh. Mary was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I know everybody in the hallways is hearing her scream. I know it, right? So after that beat goes off, she's like, run that back, run that back. I played again. After that beat goes off, I played to share my world, Ooh. right? So I play that track. I see her lean over and whisper to Hank Shockley. I see it while I'm playing the beat. I go, I play the next beat. I play the next beat. Hank Shockley comes up to me after that and tells me, um, Mary wants you to stay in New York this week. She don't want wow. you to lose. And basically the meeting was over. She, she didn't even want to hear nobody else's beats. She was, she was good. She was done. And... I stayed in New York. We went to Giant Studio. Myself, her sister, and I, we wrote I Can Love You the next day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then we did Share My World the following day. Then we did Can't Get You Off My Mind the next day. Then we did A Dream. We remade that joint. Then I went back home. I cooked up another joint with my brother. We cooked up Searching, the Roy Ayers um, sample. Yep. Brought that back to her. She wrote that joint, and then we recorded that joint at the Hit Factory. So, like, you know... I say that to say, in continuation of what I was saying yesterday, you got to stand out. Like, no matter what that crowd around you looks like, no matter how talented it is, everybody is talented in their own right, and everybody stands out in their own right of what they do. You just got to make sure when the, when the moment is time for you to completely stand out, that you're all the way ready. All the way ready. You can't be trying to get ready. You got to be ready. Period. Because that time that. Is, that time it. that time comes for everybody, by the way. We all get the opportunity to be there. We all get the moment, right? Whether you want to believe that or not, we all get a moment. But if we wasn't ready for the moment, that's the moment doesn't look like a moment anymore. Time goes by. If we wasn't ready for it, time goes by. We look back and we're later 20 years later, like, yo, I had I actually had the opportunity, but I missed it. So you truly believe. Because, they, again, there's somebody watching this. There's somebody going to be listening to this in podcast form. You truly believe whoever we are, wherever we are in our journey, each one of us at some point in our life does get that moment. Now, what we do with it is up to us. But you believe that moment presents itself to any and every one of us. Absolutely. 100%. Right? But, like, scared money don't make money, though. There you go. You know what I mean? You could be in the elevator with somebody that can bring an opportunity to you. But if you don't, if you don't speak up, if you don't talk about what you, what you do and what your talent at and your gift is or whatever, then it's going to keep moving. They're not, it's, it, doesn't mean it's, it's, it doesn't mean someone's going like this. Yo, 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 which it ain't like that. What I mean is it's always around. There's always someone or something around that can spark something in someone. If you don't take the initiative, like I said yesterday, to work your faith, right? then it don't mean anything. It don't mean anything. You, 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 you as good as a tree. You as good as a tree, because if you're standing still and not moving, it don't mean nothing. But you got to move, move like the wind. So you got to know, like, okay, that this is an opportunity. Give me five minutes with anybody. If I, if I see any smidgen of an opportunity, I'm going I'm to take advantage of it. There you go.
You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna make it known that, that this is what I do. This is what I believe I'm great at, and maybe we should do something together. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.